Danny Latane is practicing for the Cybathlon. With a high-tech prosthesis, he drags the copper ring along a rack, one of six tasks in his event. Since losing his hand in a work accident nearly 35 years ago, he's worn a hook on his right arm. Now, thanks to this university lab, he has fingers that move, grip, and fill him with hope and wonder. In the last year, just over a year, I never did that movement because in my hook, I never used my fingers. Now I'm using my fingers, and it's, it's unreal. The new prosthesis has pressure sensors to detect muscle movement further up the arm. They activate the fingers and wrist, allowing even greater movement than a real human hand. Researchers hope that a larger scale project to be developed after the games might spread the technology to places where it's badly needed. 3D printing, prototyping, and as well with uh, cheap pressure sensors and also uh, electronics that can be done in-house. All of this can be um, re deployed in such regions as Afghanistan or Iraq. Organizers of the Zurich event want to bring it to Tokyo for the 2020 Olympics and Paralympics to show more people about just how technology can offset severe injuries. It's really about reducing the stigma of disability and also pushing researchers out of labs like these and putting the technology um, to use. A lot of technology has been developed in labs but stays in labs. Over the decades since his injury, Danny Latane has stayed physically active. He's a water skiing instructor, teaching disabled and able-bodied people to skim over the water, just as he does. He knows what he wants to achieve in Switzerland. Our goal is to win. Our goal is to demonstrate that this new technology um, that has been created here at SFU uh, works, and it works very, very well. And a gold medal for Canada. And a gold medal for Canada. That's what we want, you bet. Whatever the outcome of the competition, the Cyborg Olympics looks set to be an inspiring demonstration of technology That's and tenacity. <laughs> we'll take every second. Daniel Ack, Al Jazeera, Vancouver.